to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel the of christ spreading the soul-saving message of and jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ welcome to the gospel of christ program my name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at 1-855. 458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. The Scripture says, The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Titus chapter 2, verse number 11. We welcome you today to our series of lessons on fundamentals of the faith. And as we think about things that are fundamental to faith, we realize that God's grace is such a fundamental part of salvation that without it, there'd be no hope whatsoever. The Bible says in John 1 verse 17 that the law came through Moses, but grace and truth are given in Christ Jesus. And it is that grace that is epitomized in the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior. 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9, Paul said, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though He was rich, Yet for your sakes He became poor, that we through His poverty might be made rich. And so grace is one of those truly rich and encouraging subjects that we think about in Scripture. But as we also think about the idea of grace, let's realize that a lot of false doctrines have been spawned about grace. For a few moments, let's deal with some of those ideas so that we can get the negative things about grace that are out there out of the way. Some of the false teachings that exist concerning grace are as follows. Some would say that grace is a license to sin. That is, that if we've got God's grace, we don't have to be as concerned about sin because grace is going to cover all sin no matter what. You know, there was a doctrine like that in the New Testament day, and Paul specifically addressed that. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1, Paul said, What, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And in context, the argument is God's grace was given to deal with the sin problem where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. And thus some walked away saying, more sin, more grace, therefore we can keep sinning and keep living it up and God's just going to keep dumping His grace on us. Well, is that the idea in Scripture? Paul said, God forbid. Certainly not. And here's the answer. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? The Bible clearly teaches that grace is not a license to sin. Just because God's grace has been freely given to mankind doesn't mean we can run out and sin and live it up and live an immoral, ungodly lifestyle and just take it easy and say, well, God's grace will take care of that. 
There's no doubt grace is available, but grace doesn't give free reign to sin in our lives. In fact, grace teaches us to deny ungodliness, worldly lust, and to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Titus chapter 2, verse number 12. As we think about another false doctrine relative to grace, let's realize that grace alone will not save us. There are some who say that faith alone saves. There's the idea that the grace alone is all we need, when in reality we need grace and faith combined, Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. Grace doesn't factor out my need to submit and obey the will of God. Do you remember Jesus' words in Matthew 7, verse number 21? Jesus said, it's not everybody that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Ephesians 2, verse 8 clearly says, by grace are you saved. Now, if the verse ended right there, it'd be all different. But then it continues. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. You've got God's grace, and you've got faith, obedient trust in God, and those two are not diametrically opposed. They go hand in hand. And so grace alone is not going to save us in and of itself. Yes, we're thankful for grace, but it must be combined with faith. Then let's deal with another false idea relative to grace, and that is a lot of people will say, once you've been saved and once you've obeyed the gospel, that a person can never fall from grace. We often hear it termed that way. You can't fall from grace. Another way of saying it is once saved, always saved. Is it true that once I become a child of God, I can never fall from God's grace? Well, you know that language is used and we now are going to see from Scripture that God does not teach you can't fall from grace. In fact, the Bible says you can fall from grace in that exact language. Listen to Galatians chapter 5 and notice what the Scripture says in verse number 4. The Bible says to Christians who are now trying to go back to the old law, Paul is writing to the church in Galatia. Church is made up of the saved, Christians. You, those of you who are trying to go back to the old law, you've become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, listen now, you have fallen from grace. Isn't that amazing? There's the old, whole idea that says you can't fall from grace, and yet when we turn and open up our Bible, Paul is writing to Christians, and Paul says to Christians, you have, already has happened, you have fallen from, and the literal Greek word there is ek, or out of. You've fallen out of grace. You've become estranged or cut off from Christ. And so maybe you've heard the idea that you can't fall from grace. Friend, that's just not taught in Scripture. Let me give you a couple of clear examples. Acts chapter 8. Verses 20 through 22, Simon the sorcerer has just obeyed the gospel. In his former life, he was into uh, trickery and magic and things like unto that. And now he sees bona fide miracles by the Holy Spirit. He says, I'll give you money for that gift. And Peter looks at him and says, you've got neither part nor portion in this matter. Your heart's not right in the sight of God. And then he says in Acts 8 verse 20 these words, your money perish with you. Question, was Simon in a lost state where he was going to perish at that point? Your money perish with you. Simon, who had just obeyed the gospel, fell out of God's grace. He was in a lost state. Writing to the church in Revelation chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, Jesus encourages them to be faithful. And He says of those who remain faithful, I will not blot your names out of the book of life. Now, the fact remains, though, if they did not remain faithful, Jesus would blot their names out of the book of life. And according to Revelation 20, verses 12 through 15, anyone whose name is not written in the book of life will be cast in the lake of fire. If their names could be taken out of the book of life and they could be lost in the lake of fire, friend, let's not buy into the idea that 
You cannot fall from grace and you cannot ever be lost. Second Peter 1 verse 10 really places the emphasis. I understand God's going to do His part. There's no doubt. But I also have to do mine. Second Peter 1 verse 10, we're told to make, be even more diligent to make our calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you'll never stumble. If I can't fall from grace... Why do I need to be more diligent to make my calling and election sure? Again, the idea is I've got to remain faithful. Grace and faith are combined. What part then does grace play? The fundamental idea of grace that we find in the New Testament is it's God's grace that makes salvation a reality and a possibility for mankind. That salvation and that grace originated with God Himself in the fact that He was willing to send His Son. You know, when you think of grace and we think of how can we define and best describe grace, I doubt you could find more beautiful words than John 3.16 to show the Father's part in making salvation possible. The Bible says, God so loved the world, He gave. Gave what? His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, in the New Testament, there is a direct connection between the word grace and the word giving. In fact, in 2 Corinthians chapters 7 through 9, the idea of grace and their giving are used interchangeably. And it's interesting that in John 3, 16, God so loved the world He gave. Gave what? His only begotten Son. Salvation is a possibility because of what God the Father did in making salvation available. But you know, as we think about grace and its part in salvation, that grace came through Jesus Christ. Let me mention to you 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9. If I had a, a top 10 list of verses that I would say are probably the most beautiful ones in all of Scripture, this would be real close to the top. The Bible says, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to it now. Though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that we, through His poverty, might be made rich. Grace makes salvation a reality because it came through Jesus Christ, the selfless one. You remember the words of John 1, 17? Law came through Moses, but grace and truth are in Christ Jesus. When God set the plan in motion to send His Son, Jesus in Hebrews 10 willingly said, Here am I, Lord, in essence, send me. Who will go for us? Here am I, send me. And He came to this earth left heaven, the very place I'm trying to go, came to this earth, lived as a, a pauper, we might say, ultimately, so that I can have the riches of heaven. You know, when I think of the words of John 14, I go to prayer place for you. If I go to prayer place for you, I'll come again and receive it to myself. In my Father's house are many mansions. How is that all possible? That grace is made possible by the selfless life and sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as I think about this grace, it's revealed to us. God's grace is revealed to us by the Holy Spirit in the Scriptures. What do we mean? I want you to think of the words of Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. The Bible says, The grace of God that brings salvation has been revealed to all, has been made known, revealed to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. The grace of God has been revealed to us. How? In the Scriptures. God's Word teaches us about grace. I've got the Father playing the role, uh, the one who enacted the grace of God. I've got Jesus Christ who came to this earth as the greatest expression of grace. And you've got the Holy Spirit revealing God's grace to us on the pages of Scripture. And so grace is such a fundamental idea. And all the Godhead play a huge role in bringing that grace to mankind. But friend, as we think about grace, let's also realize 
while it is grace that makes salvation a, a possibility, makes it something we can all have, the grace of God brings salvation to all mankind, our faith also plays a big part in receiving that grace that God has given. I want you to listen to the words of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10 again. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. By grace you have been saved through faith. Faith makes God's grace a, a, a reality, a possibility that exists now in our life. You know, Hebrews 11.1 1 teaches us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. And the Bible, just as essential as grace is, my friend, faith is also equally essential. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to Him must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Think about it in these terms. God makes His grace available. He makes it a, a possibility. That is, God has brought salvation to all men. The Bible says, Let whoever will come and drink freely of the water of life. Revelation 21 and 22. God wants all men to be saved. 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. And so God's grace makes it a reality. God desires for every man to be saved. But is God going to force mankind to be saved? Of course not. It's available. It's here. Anybody who wants to take of God's grace can do it. But God's not going to force them. God's not going to make them. God gives them the choice. My faith is when I look at the evidence, when I see what God has done, and I combine my faith with God's grace, which, my friend, makes salvation a reality for the child of God. It's been said that grace is God's part in salvation, and faith is man's part in salvation. Faith picks up where the Holy Spirit left off in revealing the Word of God. Can I, can I know God exists? You bet. How? By faith. Romans 10 verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so as we think about this idea and as we think about God's grace and faith, let's realize that faith has some essential parts as well. For example, our faith must trust God's Word as it is. Remember Romans 10 verse 14? How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? When we hear the Word of God, when we look at the evidence, when we search the Scripture, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 and Acts 17 11, then we have the faith to trust God's Word and take God at His Word. But, but trust in and of itself is not all that's needed. You also have to act upon that trust. Do you remember Romans 10, verse number 13? Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, the Bible teaches we must act upon, we must call upon God's name. And of course, calling upon the name of the Lord in Scripture requires that we get up and do what God says. Acts 22, verse 16, Saul came, or Ananias came to Saul and said, Saul, why, Saul, Saul, why are you waiting? Arise, be baptized, and wash away your sins. Listen to this now. Calling on the name of the Lord. And so faith is also a big part of man's side. God's made salvation available. Man must access that by his faith. And when you put the two together, that's what pleases the Father. Now, friend, please understand, when faith and action are combined, you'll have a real life faith. But just as grace alone won't save, please realize the Bible teaches faith alone won't save. I hear a lot of people say, all you've got to do to be saved is believe in Jesus. Faith and faith only is all you need. You know, there's a whole doctrine that says faith alone will save. You know what's amazing about good, honest Bible study? When I take my Bible... And I compare doctrines like can't fall from grace or faith alone. And I read my Bible. I can see in the exact language of false teaching 
Those ideas are not true. Let me share this one with you. Did you know that the only time the words faith alone or faith only occur in Scripture, God again says that it will not save? Look in your Bible in James chapter 2, and I want you to notice what the Scripture says toward the end of James chapter 2 in verse number 24. Listen to these words about faith alone. The Bible says, You see then that a man is justified by works, and here's its only occurrence in the Bible, and not by faith only. What? The only time God uses the words faith and only, God says you're not saved by faith only. Just as we're not saved by grace only, we're not saved by faith only. Each has its part. God's done His part. Man must be willing to obey the will of God. Friend, the Bible clearly teaches, even when I obey God, I'm still dependent upon His grace. Are we going to give an unequal part to faith or grace? Surely not. Is grace important? Absolutely. Is faith important? Sure it is. Can I be saved by my own works? No. But does that negate the fact that I've got to do something? It does not at all. The Bible says in Luke 6, 46, Jesus said to the religious elite of His day who thought that they were really it spiritually, Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Must I obey Christ? Do you remember John 14, verse 15? Jesus said, If you say you love me in essence, you've got to keep my commandments. Do you remember the words of Hebrews 5, verses 8 and 9? Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him. Must I obey Christ and respond in faith to the grace of God? Absolutely. There's no doubt throughout all of history, man has always had to follow and obey the will of Almighty God. Now friend, as we've emphasized in this lesson, we want to drive home the idea because it's so fundamental to grace. Let's drive home the idea that, that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the grace of God. This is seen so vividly in Scripture. You know, one of the things that you don't see a lot of in the Old Testament is grace. There's some glimpses of it. But grace didn't come through Moses. Grace came through Christ. James 2 verse 13 along with John chapter 1 verse 17. The law came through Moses, but grace and truth are found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the epitome and the example of that. When He left heaven, when He came to this earth, when He lived a, a selfless life, as He was willing to give up and sacrifice, and, and ultimately when Jesus hung on the cross and died in agony, you cannot find a deeper more beautiful expression of God's grace in Scripture. He's the epitome of that grace. Philippians 2 verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be made equal with God, but he humbled himself, became, took upon himself the form of a bondservant, became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. All those ideas are the beautiful expression of God's grace in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But you know, as we think about the idea that leads to salvation, both grace and man's faith, there's a sense in which we realize the selflessness involved in God's offering of salvation and our need to have that, that sense of humility and selflessness in obeying the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Friend, let's realize that the way to salvation does not exist within man himself. Man didn't originate it. It's not his ideas. We've got to have dependence and the humility to submit to God. You remember Jeremiah 10 verse 23? Jeremiah said, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It's not in man who walks to direct his own steps. Both Proverbs chapter 14 and Proverbs chapter 16 clearly teaches there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. It's not what I think. It's not my opinion. It's not your opinion that matters. What matters is, 
God's plan of salvation as taught in the New Testament. And friend, when we submit, listen carefully, when we submit to God's grace through faith, we're not saying, we can't walk away and say, look what I've accomplished within myself, or look what I've done, or, or boast or brag about ourselves. When grace and faith are combined, what's the best we can say? What was said in Luke 17, 10? Jesus said, and you, when you've done all those things commanded you, say, I'm an unprofitable servant. I've only done that, which is my duty to do. And so it's not our own merit. It's not our own accomplishments. We can't boast and brag about salvation, but we do desperately need to obey the gospel and become a child of Almighty God. Friend, as you think today about God's grace and faith being combined, listen carefully. This is God's message of love for you. God so loved His creation, and He so desperately wants all of them to be saved, 1 Timothy 2, 4, that He gave His only begotten Son so that we could have eternal life. The Father let His Son come to this earth, suffer, be mocked, be laughed at, be spit upon, and watched Him hang on a cruel Roman cross so that I could have the hope of salvation. That's God's grace making salvation available. My faith is when I step up and I realize that's what God has done for me and therefore I need to submit to and obey the will of God and respond in faith as God has taught me to do in the Scriptures. Not just saying, Lord, Lord. That's not what we're talking about. That's not what the Bible's talking about. That's, that's not God's plan there. Matthew 7 verse 21 but actually doing the will of the Father. Hebrews 5, verses 8 and 9. And so we ask you today, as you think about this fundamental idea of grace, and as we think about man's faith, have you responded in faith to the grace of God? Have you obeyed the gospel? Have you heard the, the message contained within the pages of this book that Jesus is the Savior of the world? Do, do you believe that message? And are you willing, based on belief in that message, to, to change your life and repent? Luke 13, 3. Would you confess your faith in Christ as the Son of God and to have your sins washed away and become a child of God? Would you be immersed in water? For the forgiveness of your sins, Acts 2 verse 38. If you've done that, friend, then the grace of God encourages each of us to keep living faithful for Jesus every day of our lives. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.